Hi right, guys, Paul here with 299 Tactical. We're back out on the range today. Got the uh, SCAR 17 out. Doing a little preliminary testing again. You know, never really stops with this gun. Gonna push the envelope with the uh, stock setup as far as we can, as far as the upper goes. Um, so uh, in preliminary trials with this uh, Luth MBA 3 stock. Uh, this is a kind of like a tactical style precision stock for uh, carbine buffer tubes on AR. So I actually retrofitted that with a Mesa Tactical um, SCAR to AR adapter. So it comes with the adapter and their proprietary buffer tube, which is also done in FDE to match the upper. Uh, I know the, the stock doesn't quite match as well as I thought it would, but it's pretty close. Um, you know, typical 50 shades of FDE kind of thing. So we'll just go over the whole gun while we're here. Let's do a nose to toes kind of deal. So we'll start up on the muzzle end and work our way back. So up here on the front end of the gun, this is the factory muzzle device for the SCAR 17 and 16. This is a PWS um, 5 by 24, uh, 5 8 by 24 thread pitch muzzle brake that comes factory on both the SCARs and the 16 that's half by 28 though. Um, but it's coming back from there. We have the factory pencil profile barrel uh, to the factory gas block with a flip up front sight. Now I obviously can't flip my front sight up right now because my sunshade gets in the way of the sight. Now I can take that off and use the front sight, but the back sight's up underneath the optic, so it's really not really a, a primary concern of mine. Um, so what I wanted to do with this whole overall gun before we go any further is I wanted to make it more of a DMR style gun, designated marksman rifle, or kind of like a, a, a precision rifle gun. Um, you know, more like that uh, that medium to long distance engagement kind of to help stand the standoff distance on the battlefield increase, you know, if you will, and do some more uh, like precision oriented work, but not quite get to that sniper level because it's never going to be there in this particular platform. So, going back from that, um, the scope and mount. We'll just go over that. So, the scope is a Vortex Viper PST Gen 2. It's a 3 to 15 by 44. Um, it does have a first focal plane reticle in this. With It, it is an M MOA reticle, EBRC 2 MOA reticle. Um, it's illuminated, and it has tactical turrets. Uh, one MOA per click tactical turrets. These turrets, you can actually uh, t loosen the caps adjust the caps independently of the base turret so that way you can have an infinite zero adjustment. Uh, it's not necessarily per click to get a zero. You can set that wherever it wants. Once you take this top turret off and loosen the bottom ones, you can actually set the turret independently. It spins freely. It doesn't have any clicks anymore. So you can set it exactly how you want. Like I said, it's illuminated, supply with a battery. It has a parallax adjustment on this side of the gun um, for zero or 20 yards all the way out to infinity. Um, and the mount that it is in is a Vortex cantilever. Um, it's a two inch cantilever mount with um, twin ring. Uh, it has four screws per set of rings. Um, and going back from that, so I have the stock flip up sight in the back, which like I said, I'm not really using because my scope is covering it and I, there's no way I could actually have this set up the way I want with the overall setup of the gun. For my eye relief and my particular length of pull, I just can't use this anymore, so I'm just keeping it here just in case it's good where to break. Um, going down into the upper. The upper is the factory upper as it came. There is no modifications to this upper. Um, maybe one day I'll get a high desert dog barrel in it. I don't know. It's quite a lot of money. Let's see how far we can go with the factory barrel first. Um, going down into the lower. Stock polymer lower. Still completely uh, unopened lower as far as internals. Now uh, some of the external things that I have changed are I have Parker Mountain Machine safety levers on this on both sides, the same exact lever on both sides of the gun. Um, I do also have their BCD uh, device here so that's their battery control device so you can actually have an oversized uh, bolt catch bolt release lever and that is also supplied by Parker Mountain Machine again along with this Haug Modify Grip. They modify the grips in house so that way they fit onto the scar. You can do it at home, but just about any AR grip will fit on here with some slight modifications. But I just figured for the $35 that it cost, it'd just be more sensible to just get somebody to already do it for me and know it's professionally done. So um, that's really about it. So going forward, what am I going to do with the gun? What is its overall objective? Okay, so the polymer lower may not stay around forever. I know a lot of people go to the handle defense metal lowers. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I think there's a lot of hype over that for what you're getting. 
Um, the money spent is kind of ridiculous as well. Um, however, I think the Striker Enterprises lower is probably a better option. Um, it's a little cheaper. You get a better quality coating. It matches the upper better. Not that I really care about that, but, you know, just some food for thought. I will also probably get an aftermarket charging handle for sure because while my scope mount doesn't get in the way on the left-hand side over here, let me just turn this around and show you guys. Just so you know, there is nothing behind us but mountains, so there's uh, no worry about the muzzle end being downrange. No, it's in a safe direction. So this is the stock charging handle on the SCARS. Uh, it is fully ambidextrous. You can swap sides. Uh, the safety, again, like I said, is completely ambidextrous, but I plan on changing this charging handle um, probably to something that has like a downward swoop to it and it's something that's oversized. So it just makes more sense uh, for the particular setup that I want to run. It's a little more ergonomic as well. So the mag release is also ambidextrous on the SCAR, and the bolt catch bolt release would be as well. So um, I'm going to run on the other side of the gun here. I'll switch back around for future plans. Going to run an oversized push button on this side. That is also made by Parker Mountain Machine. And I think that's pretty much it minus the trigger. I'm going to go with the Timney single stage, three and a half, uh, three and a half pound drop in. Now, a lot of people go, oh, well, you're going wrong if you don't use the Geisley. That's all wrong. Well, for the work that I'm doing from the bench, it's most of this gun's job. It's either going to be on the bench or it's going to be laying from the prone position. So, single stage is where it's at for me. Double stage is going to do nothing for me trying to do designated marksman work or precision work. So, that's just going to cause creep. It's going to cause the gun to move. And as soon as I put my finger on the trigger, the trigger should be going off anyways. That's This is your number one safety is your trigger finger. So, you know, ultimately, I think the Geisley is more suited towards house-to-house -to -house kind of deal. You know, uh, maybe shit hits the fan. Um, you know, if you want to use this as a personal defense weapon at home in the house, I think the Geisley is a better option for you for that for a two-stage setup. So uh, I'm going to go with the Timney, the drop-in setup. And probably, like I said, and probably on a Striker Enterprise's lower. And... That'll pretty much wrap the lower all up for me. I um, think I'm going to run this stock and adapter for quite some time, get some more testing in with it. Right now, I feel pretty good about it. I didn't really like it at first when I first put it on the gun, but I'm getting, I'm getting a little more happy with it now. So that leaves me with getting an actual good bipod. This thing, not going to work out for me. It has no cant. It has no swivel, nothing. Uh, it's a little too tall for my liking, so it's just on there because I borrowed it off of another gun of mine just to get the job done for now so we can get some accuracy testing in, but I'm also definitely going to go with an Atlas here shortly. Um, an Atlas or maybe an Accutac, I'm not really sure. Either way, they're going to be expensive, along with one of their monopods for back here. So that way I can get myself out of the equation as much as possible for when we're doing these accuracy demos. I can really make sure this gun's supported on its own. and Basically, like it'll be in a lead sled, more or less, um, but with me still behind it. Um, and really, like I said, the overall goal is to try and get this thing consistently under a minute of angle at 100 yards. Is that possible? I don't know. According to some SCAR guys, it is. According to some other SCAR guys, it's not. Some people say it's a battle weapon. Some people say it's a house-to-house -house gun. Some people say it is a DMR. My personal opinion of it is this gun suits a DMR role extremely well, and it's more than accurate enough up to this point. I'm showing a minute to a minute and a half with just about everything that I'm running. Um, so it's very consistent and well worth the money to me. So that's where I'm going to go with it. If I can't get there, so be it. But eventually one day, like I said, it'll probably get a high desert dog barrel in it. You know, a heavy contour, uh, completely floated gas block, uh, three-position gas block from them. And it'll probably be in a 6.5 Creedmoor because 6.5 Creedmoor has a higher accuracy potential than 308 anyways to begin with. So that's the overall projections for the gun. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll make sure I put the full build list in the description box below. And uh, there will be more videos coming with this on the way. A lot more accuracy, mag dumps, all kinds of fireball action. It'll be a lot of fun. We'll, we'll turn her up and uh, we'll have a lot of fun with this one. So if you guys have any questions, like I said, feel free to comment them below. And give me a follow and uh, a subscribe as well. Ring that notifications bell so you get uh, notifications when I upload. And let me know what I can do better. Please feel free to comment. Let me know what I can do better down below. Thank you for your time. It's Paul 299 Tactical. I'll see you guys later.